Hey there, my friends. It's Tom with Watching River. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm so glad you're here, and I hope you're well. The Lord has given us another good day, and we will rejoice and be glad in it as we await this pre-tribulation rapture of the church, which I believe could happen at any time. I am looking up every single day. I have so much stuff to cover, you guys. So much stuff today. I can't be giving any uh, snack suggestions. We just don't have the time. But imagine if you and I sat together and we had the time and we discussed having maybe cheese pierogies and strawberry lemonade. Wouldn't that be good? It's too bad we don't have the time. All right, I'm going to read. Uh, I'm going to go to scripture before we get into the news of the day. I'm going to read the 23rd Psalm. Okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Man, that definitely is probably one of the most, I don't know, it's probably the most beautiful psalm, but then I think of other ones too. And I love Psalm 27, I love Psalm 34, I love Psalm 84, it was my favorite for years. It's amazing. God's word is amazing. Okay, let's look what's going on. On the eve of the U.S. election, I mean, what's going to happen? I don't know. My gut feeling is not good things for the presidential election this year. I don't see good things. Maybe tomorrow will come and go, and it'll be pretty smooth election, but who will win and what steps will be taken to not let the person win? Who knows? We've seen crazy stuff in this country the last few years. So I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to watch it, right? And we're just going to wait on Jesus' perfect timing to come get us out of here. <laughs> I'm going to start off here in the Wall Street Journal. Iran tells region a strong and complex attack is coming on Israel. The Wall Street Journal said Iran sent messages to the region that it intends to carry out a stronger and more complex attack than the previous times. According to the same messages, Iran will use new weapons and missiles with larger warheads. Yay. Incredible. This is from the Times of Israel. The U.S. said to warn Iran it won't be able to restrain Israel if Tehran attacks again. We're on the cusp of something. When is this going to happen? They said it was going to happen before the election. That's tomorrow. Now I'm starting to think if it doesn't happen tonight, it may happen after the election. The U.S. has reportedly warned Iran in recent days against launching another attack on Israel, adding that Washington will not be able to restrain Israel if it attacks again, according to Axios, citing an unnamed U.S. official and a former Israeli official. We told the Iranians, this is a quote, we won't be able to hold Israel back, and we won't be able to make sure that the next attack will be calibrated and targeted as the previous one, the U.S. official was quoted as saying. The report quoted the officials as saying the message had been conveyed directly to the Iranians through the Israeli source, um, said a message was passed to Tehran via Swiss intermediaries. Unbelievable. This is from Insider Paper. Iran slams the U.S. deployment of B-52 bombers as destabilizing. <laughs> and Iran is a perfect example of understanding the meaning of destabilizing, right? Iran's foreign ministry spokesman Ismail Bagai on Monday criticized what he called the United States destabilizing presence after the deployment of B-52 bombers in the region. We have always believed that the presence of America in the region is a destabilizing presence, he said to a news conference in response to a question about the deployment, adding that it will not deter Iran's resolve to defend itself. 
What else? Amir Sarfati shared that there was a report that Iran has placed ballistic missiles in 74 locations throughout the country in preparation for an attack on Israel. Senior Iranian officials confirmed to Axios. 74 locations throughout the country. Also from Israel today, it is reported that Iran is planning a bigger attack on Israel and it likely involves the use of the Koramshar 4 ballistic missile. This missile, unveiled in 2023, is the fourth generation of the Koramshar missile. The first was unveiled in 2017. It carries the largest known warhead in Iran's arsenal. Major talks and rumors of war, right? I'm glad that we have Jesus that we can rest in and we don't have to worry about this stuff. We really don't. He's in total control and he's not worried. We just pray, right? We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for all the parties involved over there on all sides. I always say that because I really do believe it. Uh, this is from the Times of Israel. US B-52 bombers have arrived in the region as Iran threatens to attack Israel again. So the Central Command, the U.S. Central Command announced that B-52 bombers have arrived in its area of responsibility in the Middle East. The deployment, which was announced on Friday, is possibly an attempt to deter Iran from attacking Israel, as it has promised to do, following recent direct attacks on each other. Israel Today um, shared this on Telegram. They said, high alert. Arab media says Iran is preparing for an imminent attack on Israel. Iranian officials have said the next attack will be much more significant than the previous. And the White House says if Iran attacks, Israel will be unrestrained in its response. In the meantime, the U.S. has redeployed 12 B-52. They were talking about eight, I believe, on Friday. We, I think we talked about eight being deployed, but they've deployed 12 B-52 strategic bombers to the Middle East. And another aircraft carrier, the USS Abraham Lincoln, is en route to the region. What are the next few weeks going to be like in this world? I, I don't know. I'm not seeing kumbaya in the next three weeks, you know. Um, could the rapture happen? It most certainly could. Because you know what? It could happen anytime. We're in the last days. But man, I'm just, we are living in very, very interesting and perilous times. But God. This is from Bubba News on Telegram. He said, global state of, of affairs. Countries are asking themselves, Israel is asking, will Iran perform a decapitation scale strike? Iran is asking, will Israel answer back with nuclear strikes? The USA is asking, will we, will we be drawn into the conflict? Russia is asking, will Israel normalize nuclear weapons and use them first? North Korea and China are asking, will the U.S. get involved against Iran so that we can go against South Korea and Taiwan? Ukraine is asking, will we lose U.S. support if the U.S. gets involved against Iran and others? What a spider web they have woven together. And then he quotes Matthew 24, 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. There you go. Here's another one from Baba News. The Biden administration says Israel has 11 days to implement our demands or will suspend aid. Biden administration gives Israel 10 days until November 13th to implement the USA demands to improve and increase humanitarian aid to Gaza, or the USA will, sus will suspend military aid. Much of the humanitarian aid has been confiscated by Hamas in order to continue its operations of terror. That has been proven time and time again. But it's not stopping this administration from threatening not Hamas, but threatening Israel, even though this morning I saw a video of them opening flower bags. It was supposed to be flour for the people, the Palestinians, and it was cigarettes that they sell to make a lot of money, you know. So it's just, you know, clown world, honestly. 
Uh, yesterday, the Prime Minister Netanyahu, he visited the Lebanon border. And he, this is a quote from him. Hezbollah must be driven beyond the Latani River. Their arms destroyed and any attack met with full force. This is how we ensure the safety of our people in the north. Yeah, Resolution 1701 could have done that decades ago if they had enforced it. But they didn't. And here we are. What else? This is from Israel today. Nuclear test or divine warning? Early this morning, and this was yesterday, a 4.7 magnitude earthquake struck eastern Iran with the tremors felt in Tehran. Could this be from a nuclear test? Or was it God's warning to Iran for daring to attack the Jewish people? Don't know if we'll ever know that. Don't know. The last time we heard it was a an earthquake and it was a nuclear test. I don't know about yesterday's. Uh, this morning, Amir Sarfati said, within a half an hour, the Israeli Air Force intercepted four unmanned aircraft from Lebanon and Syria. Happened this morning. He also said a short time ago, several hostile aircrafts were intercepted in the Golan Heights area. No alerts were triggered. The UAVs most likely came from Iraq. They're really using Iraq now for attacks and threatening future attacks from there. So we'll see what goes on there. This is very sad from Israel today. It was shared on the cover of one of the Arab newspapers, but it said Israeli officials believe only 51 of the 101 remaining hostages are still alive. It's kind of the number we've heard for months, but they said it again this morning, 51 alive. They don't even know where they are, you know. Uh, what else? This is from Israel today. It's a miracle how the Hamas invasion saved the Galilee from Hezbollah. The mayor of Safat says, without Hamas invasion, Israel might have ignored the Hezbollah threat until it was too late. Yeah, they have found so much stuff, so much stuff in Lebanon that that Hezbollah was getting ready to attack Israel with, like a ground invasion and probably doing the same stuff that Hamas did. The Hamas invasion was catastrophic, but it was followed by a miracle, said the new mayor of Safat, one of the most targeted towns in northern Israel. Hezbollah had planned to invade and occupy the towns of northern Israel, he said. Had Hezbollah invaded northern Israel simultaneously as when Hamas invasion happened on October 7, 2023, there is a high probability that it would have caused five to ten times more damage and more casualties than what happened in the south, and that large portions of the Galilee would have been conquered and temporarily occupied. Yeah, this whole Hamas thing led to them finding out what was in Lebanon, in southern Lebanon, and how Hezbollah was using it to get ready for attacks on Israel. So that's the only language these people speak. You know that. Also from Israel today, Hezbollah has said, we won't even begin to discuss terms for a full unilateral ceasefire. Um, I'm sorry, let me start that over. We won't even begin to discuss terms before a full unilateral ceasefire by Israel. In other words, there's nothing to talk about. Yeah, they won't, they don't want to talk about any kind of ceasefire until Israel completely stops. What else? Prime Minister Netanyahu and opposition leader Lapid will meet at noon for a security update today. It's past noon right now, Israel, Israel time, so they've already had that meeting. U.S. bomber, this is from Insider Paper. U.S. bomber joins air drill with South Korea and Japan. Wonderful. South Korea, Japan, and the United States on Sunday conducted a joint air drill involving a heavy bomber, uh, Seoul's military said, in response to North Korea's latest long-range missile test. The exercise took place three days after Pyongyang launched one of its most powerful and advanced solid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missiles, which experts say could reach targets in the mainland United States. So they did that there. You guys okay? Hit, pause the video and grab a cookie. Have a cookie. Have two. Uh, this is also, Bubba News shared this about the two-state solution thingy that we're seeing a lot of talk about. He shared a, 
a uh, headline that says King Salman invites Mahmoud Abbas to Arab Islamic Summit. And here's what Bubba had to say. They're moving full steam ahead with this two-state solution thing. Now Mohammad Abbas of the Palestinian Authority has been invited to the big Arab Islamic Summit, which is taking place on 11-11, November 11th, in Riyadh. The OIC will be there, as the Organization of Islamic Cooperation has 57 members, and 56 of them are also member states of the UN. The exception is Palestine, because it's not a state. The president of the UAE and the Emir of Qatar stress the need to work to prevent the expansion of the conflict in the region, spare it the new con spare it the consequences of new crises, and find a horizon for peace based on a two-state solution. They just finished the kickoff to the global alliance for the implementation of the two-state solution in Riyadh on October 31st. We're going to hear more about peace in the coming days. This is unreal said Baba, and it is. Just amazing what we're seeing in these last days. It really is. So many comments said in the last two days. I can't believe we're still here. It's like, yeah, I can't either. I can't either. This is from the Jerusalem Post. Hamas doesn't know where the hostages are, says a Sinwar expert. The main headquarters of Hamas is no longer operational, but nevertheless... There are other guerrilla fighters who are fighting throughout the region on behalf of the organization, within the framework of local and even neighborhood headquarters of Hamas. Today, no one in all of Hamas knows exactly where all the hostages are being held. According to them, Hamas is not interested in releasing the hostages. There you go, you're caught up. That's your Middle East news for the day, right there. Right there. I'm not going to talk any more election talk. We'll talk about that tomorrow and see how that goes. Uh, earthquakes, the last 48 hours, there were 85 over 4.0 and 21 over 5.0. Pretty active. All right, where's my Clown World sound effect? We may need this. We have to take a stroll into Clown World, so grab your stuff. Get ready. Here we go. This is from Geeky Gadgets. Meet the new Atlas. It's Boston Dynamics robot that thinks for itself. Great. <laughs> Maybe he can fight Elon's robots. <laughs> Boston Dynamics has unveiled a new update to its Atlas robot, showcasing a remarkable leap in autonomous capabilities. This latest iteration demonstrates Atlas, his ability, his whatever, the robot's ability to perform intricate tasks independently marking a significant milestone in the field of robotics. Atlas now operates with an unprecedented level of autonomy using advanced pre-programmed pre logic and real-time sensor data. This enhancement allows the robot to function without human intervention, representing a quantum leap in autonomous robotics. By processing vast amounts of environmental data, Atlas can make split-second decisions adapting to new situations as they unfold. Hey, let's kill Tom. <laughs> that's, that's what Atlas would say if he was in my house. Let's get him. <laughs> because they can now make split-second decisions. <laughs> All part of the glorious world of Clown World. <laughs> you guys want a humanoid robot running around your house? I didn't think so. You know, some of you do. You know, get, go get me the remote, make me a sandwich. You know, the cat's barking. I mean, the cat's meowing too loud. Go get the cat. You know, throw the cat out the door. Some some people want these robots. Me? No. No, I got kids. That's, that's as close as I get to robots. <laughs> anyway, how about we go to some comments of the day, shall we? Let's do it. You guys okay? You hanging in there? Let me know. David. I'm sick of being sick of this world. Who's with me? Man, I think a lot of people are with you, David. Sick of being sick of this world. Yeah, it's 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 hairy down here, isn't it? You know what? We have to occupy until Jesus gets us out of here. And there are many people that need to hear the gospel. Many. Nothing but dust. I feel a shift in the air. 
as if a bubble is about to burst. This world feels like a delirious place, but it's not just a feeling, but a feeling backed on biblical facts. The more we see prophecies being fulfilled, the more certain we can be. It can't be much longer now. I'm so happy and so excited to meet my Lord and Savior soon face to face, hug him and thank him for all he's done. No more sin, no more pain, no more suffering, no more loneliness, no more unrighteousness, corruption, or war. Come soon, Lord Jesus, Maranatha. Amen. Thank you. Beautiful comment. Thank you. Pam. Hey, Watchman River family, we have nothing to fear. God is still on the throne. Whatever happens with the election will only ensure us that we are even closer to going home. Maranatha. Amen, Pam. You're right. You're right. To another one. Amy, this world is like vertigo. It's spinning out of control. Hang on to Jesus. Soon we will get off this spinning world. Prayers for all. Amen, Amy. Thank you. Let's do one more. Sue's. Can you imagine how heaven is going to feel? You know how when the Holy Spirit overcomes you during praise and worship? Imagine that times a gazillion and it's constant and it's forever. Amen. I have been thinking of that a lot lately. God bless you all. I love you, Tom, and my Watchman River family. Love you too. And yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Those moments where you're praising and worshiping and it's just that feeling that you can't explain to anybody. An unbeliever would never understand what it feels like to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them and what it feels like to worship and praise our Lord. It's, it's proof of God. It's hard to explain. But once you've tasted of it, that's why so many times when people will say, well, Tom, what about this guy who was a, you know, a pastor of this church and now he's an atheist and he left the church? And I just, I honestly, when I see that, I think, well, he's either a prodigal son and he's coming back or he never belonged to the Lord because you cannot taste that Holy Spirit and walk away from it forever. You can't do it. You just can't. It's like everybody wants God to tear a hole in the sky and wave to them. I'm here. Believe in me. And you don't get that. But when you get the indwelling Holy Spirit, you get your complete proof of God. And I know most of you right now are saying amen because it's truth. It's truth. So how do you get that Holy Spirit? I'll tell you one thing. The moment you get that Holy Spirit put inside of you from the Most High God, you are saved and you are sealed until the day of redemption. You're born again. And once you're born, you can't be unborn. No matter how much you can try, you can't be unborn. So I'm going to tell you how to be saved. Because time is very short. And I think we may see in the next few weeks things in this world that you never imagined you would see. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not praying for terrible things to happen. But I'm telling you one thing. We are short on time. And you are short on time to make a decision for Christ, meaning believe in his finished work and his atoning blood. Because Jesus came here 2,000 years ago from heaven, and he came here to solve the sin problem. Because every single one of us were born sinners, were born with a sin nature. We inherited it from Adam. And we continue sinning and sinning and sinning. And Jesus came here. He didn't wait for us to clean up our acts. Jesus wasn't like, look, here's a list of rules. And once you can all obey them, maybe I'll go to the cross to forgive the sins you did before then. No, he didn't wait for us to clean up our act. Jesus came here willingly, knowing we had no shot without him. He's the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. So he came here and he was born of a virgin and Jesus was completely God and completely man in the same body. And he was perfect. His performance was perfect. And he never sinned, not even one time. Because he's the perfect lamb of God. No blemishes, no spots, perfection. And Jesus went to a cross willingly. This is after he was marred beyond recognition. Many people say he shouldn't have even survived that 
But after that, after he was marred beyond recognition, he was nailed to a cross for you and me. He could have called legions of angels to rescue him. He could have said, I'm not doing this, but he loves you too much. He solved the sin problem. He paid for our sins with his blood. And that's the gospel. That's the good news. Jesus came here to die for our sins. And his last words on the cross before he died were, it is finished. Because he had just paid the sin debt in full. Then he died, he was placed in a tomb, and he rose again the third day. And Jesus is coming back. That's the gospel. You want to be saved? You have to understand you're a sinner. You have to admit you're a sinner that needs payment for your sin, right? So go to a quiet place and say to Jesus, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I know I need these sins taken care of. And now I understand that you paid for my sins with your blood. So I have faith in your blood that it will wash me white as snow. It will completely give me a clean slate and remove my sin problem. And, and Jesus, I believe in your finished work. I believe you went to the cross. And I believe you died and you were buried and you resurrected on the third day. Jesus, I need a savior. And you're the savior of the world. And once you believe that, in what Jesus did in his atoning blood, God will put his Holy Spirit in you and you will be born again. You will have new life. You will be sealed unto the day of redemption. You will be rapture ready. You won't be left behind for this terrible seven-year period that is coming upon this earth very, very soon. And Jesus will never let you go. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. Today is the day of salvation. If this makes any kind of sense to you, where you're thinking, this this sounds like truth, you run to it because you may never, ever, ever get this feeling again. And this may be your moment. This may be the day that you are made new. Jesus said, behold, I make all things new. Let him make you new. He did all the work. All you have to do is believe. Get that Holy Spirit put in you by the Most High God. That will be your proof of God. Because once you understand the power of that Holy Spirit in you, you go, there is a God. It's real. He doesn't have to tear a hole in the sky and look at you. You're like, no, you don't have, you don't have to do that, Lord. I know you. Do it today. Because if you hear all this and you're like, I just don't want this. I don't need it. You know, I hate to tell you this, but I'm going to just tell you, I told you the good news. I'm going to tell you the bad news. If you put this off and you breathe your last breath and you keep saying, I'm okay, leave me alone. I'm a good person. You're going to end up kneeling before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus on judgment day. And your sins are still going to be with you because you've rejected the payment of them. And Jesus is going to look you in the eye and say, away from me. I never knew you. And I can't imagine how terrifying that is at that moment when you realize, wait a minute, I'm going away from Jesus now and I'm going to eternal separation from God. It's a place called hell and it's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It's not the party that people try to make it out to be. They have no source for that. That's just Satan's lie. The source we have for understanding what hell is is from the word of God. And I just told you what it was. And it's, you don't want to go there. You don't have to go there. Your sins were paid for by the blood of the lamb. But I always say, and it's sad to say this. If I proclaim this gospel, this good news that I just talked about to a hundred people, I really think 97 would be like, leave me alone. Because wide is the path to destruction. I think three people would be crying saying, wow, I've been rescued so you have a decision to make, and it's the most important decision of your life by far. Will you say yes to Jesus and believe in his finished work and his atoning blood? Or are you going to say, yeah, I just don't need that. I'm okay. I'll take my chances. It's like taking your chances on eternity. What are you trading it for? 70, 80 years, if you're very blessed to be alive that long, you're going to trade eternity for that and just say, leave me alone? You'll watch 500 hours of some series you love on TV, but you won't spend an hour thinking about the reality of what if eternity's real? 
What if there is a God? What if, what if Jesus really did die for our sins and paid for them with his blood? What if hell is real and it lasts forever and ever? And nobody's going to, nobody's going to walk away from Jesus on judgment day saying, you're unfair. No one. They're all going to say, you're a fair and just God. Because they're going to realize they heard things like I'm talking about right now. They're going to realize I heard my sins were paid for by the blood of the lamb, Jesus. And I said, nope. And you'll think, dumbest decision I ever made, rejecting the payment for my sins. Don't do that, all right? I'm going to shut the camera off now, and I'm going to say a prayer for everyone who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and my goodness, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if, not, if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.